Hi, this is Carolyn Kinane with the Contemplative Sciences Center at the University of Virginia. And this is the eighth and final video in a series of eight videos on contemplative course design, some closing advice and works cited. Humbly, I offer this list for folks who are just getting started on the journey of contemplative pedagogy, contemplative inquiry, maybe bringing some contemplative practices into the classroom. Um, and so I offer this bit of advice with uh, humility, gratitude, and a uh, continuing desire to learn. So please feel free to reach out with any suggestions or comments at any time. I would ask that instructors first start with their goals and not with the practice. So I've had instructors say to me, I want my students to meditate. I want to do mindfulness in my class. I think we should do some contemplative listening. And I'd really encourage folks to, to work with the idea of backwards design. That is, start with your goals and then choose an exercise or an activity that can help you get there. So practices are transformative. Start by reflecting on what is it that you hope is transformed. Perhaps your students are competitive and you want them to be collaborative. What exercises and activities and practices can help fulfill that goal? I would also suggest that folks have a practice that people adopt a fractal perspective and strive for integrity and authenticity. If you are journaling, your communication of the power and the efficacy of journaling as you communicate that to your students will, um, will have integrity. So um, what, what I think of is uh, walking the talk. I would ask that folks prioritize their students over their discipline. So find the human heart of your discipline. As I've said in other places, disciplines are ways of making meaning. They are not meaning in themselves. This means that you may need to create some more room in your course for human experiences for your students, and that means you may need to release some of your uh, content. I would ask that you please consider your context. What I'm offering in this series of videos works for me in my context, and I offer these uh, bits of advice for you to repurpose, remix, reuse, and consider what you are comfortable with. Consider your own uh, power dynamics and the positionalities in the room. Please give students choice and options. If you are employing contemplative practices in your classroom, please be intentional with your vocabulary. The command to close your eyes, for example, um, has, some, has some problems. And I have a, a list of best practices for facilitating contemplative practices in the classroom that you can find on our website. And I would ask that you please offer a diversity of practices to your students. There is some benefit to some consistency in doing the same practice over and over again. There's also some benefit to offering a diversity of practices. So thinking about what works for your context, what works for your learning outcomes um, is really the main thing that I want to encourage you to do. Finally, here is a list of work cited and additional resources. Some of these folks I have mentioned by name throughout the series of eight videos. Others have informed my thinking in subtler ways. Thank you so much for your time. I look forward to hearing from you. Best of luck.